Russia is threatening to pull out of its grain deal with Ukraine on Thursday unless the list of its demands are met. It's allowed million tons of Ukrainian grain to be shipped via the Black Sea ports blockaded by Russian forces. Now, if the deal collapses, it will be a further blow to Ukrainian farmers. Natasha Butler's this report from Western Ukraine. Spring in Western Ukraine. This young wheat will be ready to harvest in two months, but farmers here worry they won't be able to sell it because the war has severely disrupted exports. Alina's family has owned this farm for decades. She says Russia's blockade of Black Sea ports and new import restrictions in some EU countries are hampering trade. Since the port blockades, we've not been able to send by sea. So we started exporting via our western border to Poland and Hungary. But now they've banned our grains, so our trucks have to carry our products all the way to Italy. Poland, Hungary and three other countries recently banned imports of Ukrainian grain to prevent a glut, although the grain can still transit through them. It's forced this farm to find new clients further afield, but logistics are pushing up costs and not being able to export easily means millions of dollars worth of grain could be lost. Usually at this time of year, all of the grain on this farm would have been sold, but because of the war and all the problems linked to it, half of last year's harvest is still here, having to be stocked in the silos and in these huge plastic sleeves. A few kilometers from Poland's border, this rail transport company is trying to get things moving. We have here European wagons which are already loaded with the Ukrainian grain and it's ready for transit to the Polish port of Dansk. For... The manager says the wars changed everything. They didn't transport grain before the invasion, now it accounts for 50 percent of the business. We had a lot of requests uh, to support Ukrainian far farmers uh, for export their uh, grains uh, into Europe. And from that moment, uh, we uh, started to construct a new grain terminal. As one of the world's main grain producers, Ukraine's exports are essential for its economy and to feed people around the world. Valery says transporting it at such a vital time isn't just about supporting the war effort. It's also a way to build more connections with the European Union that Kyiv is on track to join one day. Natasha Butler, Al Jazeera, Sofkivsky, Western Ukraine. Authorities in Ukraine have detained the head of the Supreme Court in a high-level corruption probe. A Ukrainian MP says Sevolod Niazev was detained in connection with a bribe of nearly $3 million. The country's anti-corruption watchdog says it's exposed large-scale foul play at the court. It shared a photograph of cash to illustrate what it calls corruption at the highest levels of power. South Africa's president says six African countries will send a peace mission to Ukraine and Russia as soon as possible. They'll be meeting with presidents Vladimir Putin and Volodymyr Zelensky to discuss a possible plan to end the war. Nicholas Hack reports from Dhaka. A peace initiative by six African nations mediating an end to the war in Ukraine. The announcement was made by South African president Cyril Ramaphosa. Two leaders that I had occasion to speak to, that is President Putin and President Zelensky, agreed that they would be willing to receive the mission of the African heads of state in both Moscow and Kyiv. Despite pressure from Western countries, most African countries have abstained from voting on resolutions at the UN Security Council condemning Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Meanwhile, Russia has been building close economic and military ties with states in Africa since the war began. I believe Ukraine really needs to take steps forward to meet the countries of the African continent. We didn't work well for many years. We didn't pay attention. I think it's a big mistake. Ukraine is one of the biggest exporters of wheat to Africa. Russia is one of the largest exporters of fertilizer to the continent. Since the war broke out, food prices in Africa have shot up, spreading widespread discontent in Africa. The UN warns 220 million people could face hunger, with bread becoming unaffordable to many. An all-out war will be very devastating for African countries because their own resilience 
you know, it's not it's not as strong as other countries in other parts of the world. So I think if we consider these factors, we can see why African countries want to be very much actively uh, engaged in the political process. But many are questioning whether the African Peace Initiative can succeed when others have failed. The heads of state of Zambia, Senegal, the Republic of Congo, Uganda, Egypt and South Africa are set to meet with the two leaders as soon as possible. At stake is not just peace in Europe, but saving lives of many Africans. Nicholas Hawk, Al Jazeera, Dakar.